Hello and welcome back to The Note, coming to you today from the beautiful Connecticut campus of Yale University, where I'm going to be talking to the Nobel laureate economist Robert Schiller. Now, Bob Schiller is famous for many things, but perhaps above all for the so-called Schiller PE multiple, which he has used to put valuations on the US stock market and show that it was wildly overvalued ahead of the crashes of 2000 and 2007. More recently, it's become much more controversial because it's been saying incorrectly that you should be getting out of the US stock market for several years now. I started by asking him what are the limits of his PE multiple. The reason CAPE ought to work to predict the market is that earnings have always been constructed by accountants as some measure to indicate fundamental value of a company. And so price is high relative to earnings, that's a bad sign. But we're clearing out the significant problem of earnings is that they're volatile from year to year. So let's average them over some years. That gives a, a, a better indicator of fundamental value. And uh, when John Campbell and I studied it, we found that it substantially predicts returns over the next decade, if not tomorrow, but at least over the longer term. Now, one of the criticisms that has been made is that accounting conventions have changed over time, which means that it's not directly comparable, that it may not be as, as expensive relative to history as it looks. Do you think that's a fair criticism? It's a problem. I don't know that it's a serious problem, partly because accounting standards have changed in response to developments. I think we're better off with the changed accounting standards than if we ignored all the things that have changed since uh, 1871. I have had trouble finding experts on the history of accounting. There must be some somewhere. I haven't found them. Right. People are not interested. It's just like they used to throw away data on trades. We didn't have uh, a computer tape of stock uh, re prices until the 1960s. So I can't be sure that the changes in accounting definitions are for the good as I imagine they are. So yes, there's some guesswork. By the way, some people who have the philosophy that I will only use data that I can really verify are limiting their scope of history. And, and right. history is the main teacher of lessons about financial booms and busts. I suppose one other criticism that people who are trying to explain away the high level of CAPE at the moment make is that there was this extreme fall in earnings, very, you know, very dramatic uh, during the financial crisis. Is that a reasonable concern, that that stays in the, the, in the, uh, in the multiple? Well, I don't see any reason to exclude it because it was in response to a serious recession. The response tended to happen suddenly partly because companies like to take write-offs right away during the recession and blame it on the recession, and then they, the earnings can recover from there. It's some, it's, it's some little bit of manipulation in there. But if I average over 10 years, I don't see that that's a problem. And I think that we want to re reflect the actual uh, losses that companies made. Okay, now let's get to the present. We have just had what, at the very least, is a correction in stock markets. Certainly the CAPE measure implies that we need rather more than a, the correction we've had so far. How can we work out whether we have much further to fall? How much further to fall could we have? <laughs> well, that's a difficult question. It's an impossible you one. You expect but I... me to answer it? <laughs> I, I tell yeah. you though that uh, I, I'm known, better known for CAPE, yes. but I have also for years been constructing my own confidence indexes. Uh, and I've been studying both r stock market and real estate in the United States, a loss of confidence in valuation of the market, both for individual and institutional investors. The question I ask is, do you think this, the uh, stock market is uh, overvalued, undervalued, or about right? And uh, I can construct a confidence index from that. And that index is at lower levels than it has been since the, the peak of the market in 2000. 
there, there was very low. This is why I think of the, I call it the millennium boom, was a bubble. Right. Because people increasingly, as the 1990s went on, had lower and lower confidence in the valuation of the market. But they were still buying and bidding up prices. That's the sign of a bubble. So it looks to me a bit like a bubble again with uh, essentially a tripling of stock prices since 2009 in just uh, six years. Uh, and, and at the same time, people losing confidence in the valuation of the market. So ultimately, that implies this is not over just yet. This, the the problem is the short run thing of saying, when will it turn? And I don't have, does anyone have a good way of saying that? Now, the thing is, when we see a correction, that's, and also an increase in volatility and an increase in the VIX volatility index, that shows that people are thinking something, uh, worried thoughts. And it suggests to me that uh, many people are reevaluating their exposure to the stock market, and we could see aftershocks of the correction. Uh, but not maybe right away, maybe in six months or a year. So I, I'm not being very helpful about market timing, but I could, I could easily see aftershocks coming. I think the investor demand is a little bit insecure. Uh, I wish I knew better how to time from that, but I, I think that there is a concern about a major bull market developing. Okay. A concern, but not a clear forecast. I'm sorry, okay. I don't know. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.